Hello everyone, I'm Ning Ning, and I'm going to present our work on row and bounded polymorphism via disjoint polymorphism. Polymorphism and subtyping are important features in mainstream OO languages. The most common way to integrate the two is via F-sub style bounded polymorphism. A closely related mechanism is row polymorphism, which provides an alternative to subtyping while still enabling many of the same applications. Yet another approach is to have type systems with intersection types and polymorphism. A recent addition to this design space are calculi with disjoint polymorphism. With all these alternatives, it is natural to wonder how they are related. This paper provides an answer to this question. We show that disjoint polymorphism can recover forms of both row polymorphism and bounded polymorphism. To establish the relationship in a rigorous and precise manner, we formalize elaborations from lambda concat, a system F like calculus with row polymorphism, and from kernel F sub into a disjoint polymorphism calculus, Fi plus. We expect that our work is useful to inform language designers about the expressive power of those common features and to simplify implementations and meta theory of a feature-rich language with polymorphism and subtyping. In the rest of the talk, I will first introduce Fi plus and then present the key ideas of the elaboration. Intersection types are common features in many newer mainstream OO languages. Among others, intersection types are useful to express multiple interface inheritance. They feature in programming languages like Scala, TypeScript, Clang, and Flow. For example, the documentation of TypeScript shows how intersection types can express a composition operator for objects. The polymorphic function extend takes two objects and produces a result whose type is the intersection of the types of the original objects. For example, we can create a new object, Jim, as follows. The Jim object has type person and console log, and acts both as a person and as a console log. Using extend to compose objects is much more flexible than the static inheritance mechanisms of common OO languages like Java or Scala. It can type check flexible OO patterns that have been used for many years in many dynamically typed languages. Unfortunately, the extend function in TypeScript suffers from the ambiguity issues. Indeed, given two objects with the same field or method names, extend does not detect potential conflicts. Instead, it silently composes the two objects. It can unintentionally overwrite methods without any warning or errors. Additionally, the extent function is not type safe. If two objects have the same property name with different types, extent may look up the property of the wrong type. In the literature of intersection types, extend is essentially what has been identified as the merge operator. With the merge operator, we can construct terms of an intersection type, like one merge two of type int and bool. Thanks to subtyping, a term of type int and bool can also be used as if it had type int or as if it had type bool. Calculi with disjoint intersection types, like fi plus, incorporate a coherent merge operator. In such calculi, the merge operator can only merge two terms with disjoint types. For example, int is disjoint with bool, while one merge two is not allowed, as int is not disjoint with int, because it is ambiguous which value should be used at the type int. Fi further features disjoint quantification. With disjoint quantification, it is possible to merge opponents whose type contains type variables. For instance, the following term has a disjoint quantification. The disjointness annotation A is disjoint with int allows A to be instantiated only to types that are disjoint from int. Recall that with TypeScript, the definition of extend suffers from ambiguity and being not type safe. Moreover, since it is ambiguous, its implementation relies on low-level features of JavaScript and it is right biased. 
with this joint polymorphism, we can model extent as follows. Unlike the TypeScript definition, which relies on type onset features, this definition includes the full implementation. The type variable B has a disjoint constraint, which states that B must be disjoint from A. The definition of extent uses the merge operator to compose the two objects. We see from this example that the disjointness retains the flexibility to encode highly dynamic forms of inheritance while ensuring both type safety and the absence of conflicts. With this brief introduction to FI+, now let's move to elaborations from row types. Row types originally introduced to model inheritance provide an approach to typing extensible records. For example, if we have a single field record with name equals gene and an other field record age equals eight, now the record with the two fields can be seen as the concatenation of the previous two records. But what will happen if we concatenate the first record with an other one containing also the name field? One possible answer is to have a result record with overlapping fields. But that can become confusing when we want to access the name field from the record and we don't know which one it will get us. In this paper, we focus on lambda concat, a calculus proposed by Harper and Pierce that extends system F with raw polymorphism. Lambda concat avoids concatenating records with a field label in common by means of compatibility constraints. A compatibility constraint attaches a constraint list to a type variable. For example, A hash B means A lacks every field contained in B. Wait a second, that does sound familiar. Isn't it something like the disjoint quantification? Indeed, when restricted to row types, row polymorphism with constraint quantification provides an approach to recovering an unambiguous semantics for extent as well. By requiring B to be compatible with A, we can encode a row polymorphic variant of extent as follows. Here, A and B are record variables standing for record types, and B is compatible with A, which ensures the absence of conflicts. The concat operator concatenates two records at both the term level and the type level. The key difference between the two implementations of extent is that in the version with row variables, A and B only stand for record types. In contrast, in the version with disjoint polymorphism, A and B are arbitrary types. Our encoding of lambda concat into Fi plus is based on the similarity between the two calculi. However, while it clearly works for many example programs, the straightforward elaboration does not work for all programs. Indeed, it turns out that there is a subtle difference in the interpretation of the compatibility quantification and the disjoint quantification that makes the elaboration break down in some cases. Consider this example in lambda concat, where we have A compatible with L bool, X of type A, y of type l int and x concat y. Its straightforward elaboration in Fi plus simply replaces compatibility by disjointness and concat by merge. In lambda concat, the binder A disjoint with L bool expresses that A cannot have the label L at all. So even if y has type l int, x can be concatenated with y. In Fi+, plus, however, we only know A is disjoint with L bool. That means that A can still be L int as int is disjoint with bool. So it's unsafe to merge X and Y and this program is rejected in Fi+. Plus. In our paper, we have formalized two different elaborations of lambda concat into Fi+. Plus. The first elaboration exploits the obvious similarity between the two mechanisms, but it will eliminate the source of semantic difference by slightly restricting lambda concat. The restricted lambda concat will reject the problematic example as well. 
One criticism to the intuitive encoding is that it does not fully model lambda concat. So we then present a carefully designed encoding that is able to elaborate the original lambda concat to Fi plus without any restrictions at all. This is the complete encoding of the problematic example in Fi plus. The key idea is that when elaborating compatibility, we have a bottom elaboration process that will erase all types to the bottom type. In this case, A is not only disjoint with L bool, but also disjoint with L button, which ensures that A cannot have an L label at all. Since we have the bottom elaboration, we will also split a type variable A into two type variables A1 and A2, where A1 corresponds to the original A and A2 indicates the bottom elaboration result of A. With the bottom elaboration, we are able to define a complete encoding from lambda concat into Fi+. We refer to our paper for more details regarding this encoding. Now we switch to the elaboration of bounded quantification. Bounded quantification is a language feature that integrates parametric polymorphism with subtyping. As an illustration of bounded quantification, consider the following definition. The function inc takes a record with field h, stores the original argument, and increases the age. For this particular definition, it only works for a single field record. But it actually works for all records that have an age field of type int. Thanks to bounded quantification, we can formulate a variant of inc. Here, the upper bound age int restricts the instantiation of type variable a to be subtypes of age int. Wait a minute, can we express a similar subtyping relation with intersection types? In particular, if we make the type of x to be a intersect with age int, we gain a similar guarantee that the type of x is a subtype of age int. Back in 1991, Pierce informally discusses this encoding of bounded quantification in terms of intersection types by reading a bounded quantifier as an abbreviation for an unbounded one with A substituted by an intersection type. However, there is no formalization of this encoding, and it is not clear at all what fragment of programs can be encoded. Pierce showed that this is not an encoding for full F sub as it does not respect the subtyping rule for universal quantification. Nevertheless, after some, experiment after some experimentation where the encoding was manually applied to complex examples, he came to the conclusion that the encoding trick works better than might be expected. What is missing is to clarify precisely the expressiveness of this encoding with a type theoretic formalization. Our work serves as a basis to fill these gaps. By identifying an encodable fragment of F sub, that is, kernel F sub, and by providing an elaboration from kernel F sub into Fi plus, and thus, for the first time, validates the informal observation of this encoding. While doing this, we faced several technical challenges. For example, while F sub is undirected and features implicit subsumption, Fi plus is bidirectional and features explicit subsumption. We encourage interested audience to read our paper for more details about the elaboration. Furthermore, we identify the extra power of this joint polymorphism, which enables additional features that cannot be easily encoded in calculi with raw polymorphism or bounded quantification alone. We also discuss some possible paths for further exploration including the elaboration from variants of raw polymorphism, from variants of bounded quantification, to variants of intersection types. Properties about the elaboration, including type safety and coherence, have been mechanically formalized in the cock proof assistant. The cock proof can be found in our GitHub repo. Thank you for your attention.